you know, sometimes we are working on standing out right now, but you know, God is working on our, our future. So I want you to, I want to show you something. I asked your aunt to go get me a, a puzzle for, to, to make sense of this, this lesson today. So this puzzle, 24 pieces, PJ Masks. Can you all see this? Can you all see this? So suppose this was you. Is there any part of you, let's assume that all the pieces are here. Okay, I'm not going to take them out and count them. But based on the fact that this box has never been opened, Is any part of you, this puzzle, missing? No. And everything about this picture right here, you can see what the final picture is going to look like. Clear? But that's your life. All you got to know is this is it. This is the picture. But your problem and my problem is that we don't get you, you ain't going to get but one piece at a time. And our problem is that in order that if we don't keep our eyes right here, uh, uh, Shamir, give me two pieces of this puzzle. See, I, I want you to know something about this puzzle. If you look at your final picture, I, I want you to know how life works. Based on the color of this puzzle piece, you can assume that this belongs to you. Because you see the final picture. If it was yellow or silver, you would know it doesn't belong to you. But you only know that because you allow yourself to believe that this final picture is you. Even though you only had one piece. See, what happens sometimes, we're waiting to see this to rejoice. Every time you get a piece like this, Ruth, rejoice. Every time you get a piece that looks like you, that looks like your final product, rejoice. Because something is right. I, I think, and, and I thought about this on the way here, of how afraid we are. Sometimes of life. So let, let me put my notes before I get there. I want you to understand that each piece has a clue as it relates to whether it's connected to you or not. Maybe it's color. Shamir, give me one more piece. There's a piece over there with a little bit of pink in it. Yeah. Okay. Well, the other pieces were all purple. But this piece has a little bit of pink in it. And it looks like this bird. See, what you can do is say, let me, let me take that. I don't, what, what, why am I saying all this? Because sometimes we want to know more than we can know. You want to know more than you have to know. All you need to know is, is this color a part of your picture? If it is, take it. If it turns out to be somebody else's, don't you worry about it. The universe has all of that because this is what God knows. Every piece that you need, it was already in the box. You know what that means? That when you meet me, I ain't add nothing to you. It was already in the package. Everything, if you are, if you have normal uh, genes, everything that you needed to become an adult was already inside you when you was a baby. Why aren't you trusting? What, Alan, what did you do? to make that baby become an adult. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do to make hair on your chin? What did you do? Did you do anything? No, you lived and you breathed. That's all you did. You lived and you breathed. We are way too upset about a finished picture that we don't even have to make come to pass. All we've got to do is stop rejecting the parts of us 
that don't let us see what we should see when we should see it. These these puzzle pieces, unfortunately, for some of us, they don't have numbers on the back. So, what you don't, and I don't have the luxury of having, is looking for which piece should be first. We got to trust that whatever piece I get, it is part of the dynamic, the power of being me. I don't have to question it. All I know is this is the picture. This looks like it belongs. So I'm going to take it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that belongs to somebody else. It looks enough like you for you to try it. You know how many times we don't move forward? Because we looked at the piece. I mean, I don't know. There's no numbers on it. Don't you worry about it. Stop your worrying, child. You're taking God's good energy. This breath you have is borrowed. What you going to do? God, God loaned us his breath. When God comes back, is he going to be able to make good on that loan? That's the parable of the talents. So are you going to tell me you walked around with here with my breath in you and did not accomplish anything above ordinary? That's my breath in you. How did you not accomplish anything above ordinary? What happened? I gave you the box. I opened the box. I didn't give any of your pieces to anyone. What they're going to do is help be a reflection to you so that you can see your pieces. But they will not be giving you your pieces because everything you needed for life and godliness was already given to you. All we're going to do is educate you to bring it out. All we're going to do is be use this breath that we are have on loan to inspire you to reach into yourself and find the truth that's truly you. That's all I can do. But the package came unassembled, but equipped with every necessary piece to become the whole. First with you. Then we come in and we play our parts. But I don't have nothing to give you. Father already gave it to you. And until you accept that, life is going to feel chaotic. Because you're going to wait on one more person to give you permission. You're going to wait on one more person to tell you that you're free. You're going to listen to one more person who tell you you're not free because of how they think and the way they see it. And then you're going to look up and be older and frustrated. Look at your lessons. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3, 14 through 18. Read that with me. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. He said, listen, the same veil remains because you keep going back and looking at your past. You keep going and looking back at what used to be, what was, the DNA that came from your human ancestors. Listen, I'm going to read it. Listen, because I want you to hear it. But their minds were made dull. For to this day, the same veil remains. There is a veil that remains simply because you keep looking into your old, into some old dialogue, into some old stuff, some old promises, some old somebody should have. They didn't. They didn't. And as long as you are there trying to get someone who was only supposed to bring it out of you, they didn't put it in you. So because it didn't come out of you, don't mean it's not in you. But if you're going to focus on who didn't bring it out of you, you are not going to pay attention to what's actually in you. Because God and the universe can send someone else. Come on now, there's more than one liquor store. There's more than one burger joint. Sure. But your ego get fixed on you wanting something the way you want it. And your ego wants it the way you say it should be. You know how many times, how much God doesn't go by what should be? 
God is not uh, 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 unconstricted to or restricted to the, the, the way we see the world and the way we think things should go. That's why it was so hard for Jacob, who was born second, it was so hard for him to get the inheritance over Esau. Not hard for God, but hard for people to understand because the rule, the rule of the culture is whoever's first born, they are the ones that get the power, get to say so. And God did what he wanted to do. That's y'all stuff. That's cultural. They ain't universal. It doesn't have to be that way for things to be all right with me. That's why you got to let go. Watch out for all that resistance. We'll talk about today, that today. Verse 15, let's read it. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Listen, listen to this. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Nobody can do it. Nobody can take away your shame. Because shame is not about what you, uh, or what you do, it's about who you are. See, if, I, if it was about something doing, I could do something different. But I can't do nothing about what you think I think about you. I can't do nothing about what you think of yourself. That's your job. And only Christ could take that away. Only Christ could give, can give you an acceptance. Only, only God can give you the, the necessary forgiveness so you can move on. That can't come from me. Because what, what you're dealing with is who you think you are. Not what you did. So as long as you think you are that, there ain't nothing I can do. You ever had somebody who say, listen, I'm not bothered. They still think you're bothered? I, I, I don't have access to that realm. You, the, the reason why you have shame is not because of what somebody said. It's because you, because you believe what they said. People say things all the time you ain't ashamed about. But you accepted it. It's all in acceptance. So now you accepted it, and you want somebody else to go through life helping you to unaccept it. We're going to show you how to unaccept it today, though. But only Christ can take that away. We, we, I wrote on the blog, if you want to join us in the discussions, you can. But on the blog, we talked about shame. We learned, you used Psalm 32 to show how David, where David was, and it started with forgiveness. Blessed is the man whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered by the Lord. Why is that important? Let's, let's put the word shame in there. Whose shame is covered by the Lord? Because, Alan, if the Lord don't shovel your, cover your shame, your ego will. And it's going to build a whole bunch of strongholds to protect you. This is how the Lord, this is how we transfer it. Lord, you are my stronghold. You are my strong tower. You are my refuge. I'm no longer hiding. That's what shame does. I'm no longer hiding within myself. I'm, all, I'm no longer uh, distancing myself from, from life. And I'm no longer doing that. I'm coming out and I'm trusting you. But if you don't trust God, you're going to do it yourself because it's not going to go anywhere. Unless you believe that you are not who you say you are, and nobody can get you, nobody has that truth like the Lord. So much so that you'll hear, in the, you'll read in the Bible that the Lord will say, and I'm going to give you a new name, just in case you don't put some stupid labels on yourself. Just in case you got a whole bunch of what I call I am labels. I am stupid. I am slow. I am this. I am not that. I am the image that I reflect. And my reflection helps you understand where my connection is. Let me read this. You'll, hear, you'll, you'll understand now. Listen, verse 15. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. See, your, your heart is covered. I don't trust. I, I, I got to know people. Listen. You don't let too many people, too, too much of what the world has to say. We all have. Move us. Listen. Verse 16. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. When you decide, it's as simple as that. When you decide that 
You're going to turn to the Lord from whatever old stories you keep telling yourself. The veil will be taken away. What does the veil do? It hides you. That, that thing that, that's hiding you, that's protecting you, that's keeping other people from seeing what you don't want them to see. So when you turn to the Lord, the, the, the God who is slow to anger, full of compassion, when you turn to the Lord, that will, veil will be taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You'll be able to come from behind those prison walls, behind those bars, hiding. Wherever, wherever, whatever you did to, to keep people out um, uh, uh, and actually barricaded yourself in. You so, this is sometimes we're so busy trying to keep out what we think is darkness, we also keep out the light. But glory to God that even in our dark spaces, the Lord is there. You know why the Lord is there even in your dark spaces? Because we're talking about the spirit inside of you. So even when you go in prison, God is there with you. Isn't he? But you got to get in touch with him. And you got to believe something that you ain't willing to believe. And you'll never believe it when you measure yourself against man and what man believes. Some of our problems here and in this world is that we are still using man's measure to define and find our truth. Not my truth, but the truth about life. Listen. 18. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's image. Unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory. Are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. See now my spirit is inside of you. My breath is inside of you. And he said, <laughs> as long as you let me, as long as you feed on me, then you're going to reflect me. Because you will be the taker and I will be the giver. Let's look at it this way. When a man is the giver and a woman is the taker, a baby comes and a reflection shows up. Well, why aren't I reflected? And once, and once I look in the mirror... Because this one will say mirror, but it, the other verse will say like one looking in the mirror. See, the problem is I'm, I look in the mirror and I refuse to see what God tells me to pay attention to. I refuse to see myself loved. I refuse to see myself forgiven. I refuse to see my past as my past. Like one who looks in the mirror and sees what God say you should be paying attention to. But how do I know by your reflection? Now, how do you know by your reflection? How, how do you know what you're paying attention to? Because your reflection. You're not reflecting his likeness. You're too sad for that. You're too unhappy, too long for that. That's how you know. That's how you know you have your mind on something and your mind needs to be moved. But let's talk about this. Let's talk about the stage of grief. And I saw this. It's on your paper. And I saw this. This is a, a modified version. Somebody added to it. I thought it was pretty good. And why am I telling you about the stages of grief? Because when it comes time to make this transition from this transformation, you're going to have to leave an old way behind. He's already telling you that. But what happens when that old way is safe for you? What happens when you, 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 you was fighting and you was winning? And now the Lord tells you, I don't want you to fight that way. But wait a minute, I was winning. Makes no sense to me. You know, why fix what's not broken? But he said, I need you so that you can reflect me. I need you to do what I'm telling you to do. I, I, listen. Listen. Shamir, can you give me another piece? Give me two of them. Thank you, dear. See, this one, thank you so much. This one even has a piece of eyes and a face. I need you to accept what I'm telling you so I can give you this. But you keep arguing with me. But you don't know what they did. I don't have to know what they did. I know that every piece you needed was in that box. My job is to get you into the likeness of me, I, not, not to fix none of that other stuff. That's, 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 that's this worldly stuff. Come on now. You act like mere men, folks. Why you act like mere men? 
but I got a piece for you. But I need you to trust me. I give you this piece. I need you to trust me. I need you to trust Shamir that I love you. I need you to trust that forgiveness is there for you. I need you to trust. That when you come to ask me for wisdom after you probably, you know, made some bad decisions, I want you to, I want you to know that I'm not going to find faults, but I don't want you to be afraid of me to ask me. I don't want you to listen to your flesh any longer. That's telling you, but what if they go off? But I'm not going off. I know they went off, but I'm telling you that I won't find fault. I want you to ask me. I want, I want you to work out your salvation. I want you to press for truth. I want you to go to, to, to find truth and find light in your confusion. I want you in your confusion, in your doubt to call out to me. I want you to do that. But you got to stop seeing what these people have done to you to be bigger than what I'm planning to do to you. Because as long as who they are and what they have done is competing with me, you are not going to take this. Because sometimes that same person is the one with the peace. And they're only a reflection of you. You only see how bad they are because it's in you. So you think that I'm, they're here to attack you. No, they're here to call you out. To, to help you shift. This is how we say it in the world. It takes one to know one. How do you think you know that? You think, you think you know something about something that is not known to you? How do you think it became known to you? Because somewhere in your life, if not right now, it was you too. That's how you can recognize. So sometimes that, that peace is in the hands of somebody who's not going to babysit you. Who's not going to come, they don't who come and make, make sure that none of your levels are off before they say what they have to say. Listen, when them Egyptians left Egypt, they had to leave in a haste. Wait a minute, man. Give me a chance. Give me time to pack. My bread ain't even risen yet. Wait a minute. I just put the bread in the oven on the brick stove, on the brick oven. You ain't give me a chance to go get my stuff. Trust me. That ain't nothing that you're leaving back there that you need that I won't bring into your future if you need. When my mother was... In her some of her last days, she was she she got a little little feisty, and um, I had some people from the church. Those were the people who helped me take care of her. It, it, it was this church family that stayed spending out of my mother's house when I couldn't go. It was people here. That's why I always be thankful for Janella and Rob, Maria. They stayed some of the time. They stayed overnight. That's who helped me do that. But then my mother, you know, she was feeling real love, so she was, she was letting everybody you know. No, and they went to pack up her stuff because I decided, before I knew it was going to lead to death, to move her into an apartment. Because going up and down the stairs, she was already getting older. Let's stop talking about it and do it. Ran all over the place, found an apartment, even put the money down on it. So, we, you know, we, we excited. So now, my mother is not as big as she was. She, she was thinning out. So I'm just trying to say, we're going to move, but you're going from a three-bedroom house. With closets all over the place to, to be a bedroom in a den. So can I at least take your clothes that are too small for you? Can, can we at least get, get those a goodwill? She had a fit. She had a fit. But this is what I said. I said, Mom, listen. Because I don't know. Because all this, something started happening of, you know, Somebody taking something away. I said, listen to this. This how, is this how I got it. We're going to buy you all new furniture and all new clothes. Guess whose apartment was getting packed up? Whose house was getting packed up? Listen, this is God. Listen, listen, mom. You ain't got to worry about this. Listen, y'all. 
You ain't got to worry about what you're leaving behind. What the, the things, that the valuable things you're leaving behind. What I have for you, what God says, is so much more valuable than that, but you won't know that until you let me take you. You want dessert before the meal, and I don't want to give it to you. But you still got an old story that you keep reading. And until that changes. But what happens when it comes time to change? What's my point here? What happens when it comes time for us to change? Well, the truth is, if I use my mother as an example, she felt like she was going to experience a loss. See, a, a lot of times we fear when we should be grieving. We, the, 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 the emotion we get is anger and fear instead of mourning that would lead to acceptance. So look at this. Let's look at the stages of grief. This one is modified. I like this one. The first stage, when, when, when you're asked to change something that's working for you, as far as you're concerned, shock. The initial paralysis. Shock. I didn't know I was this. I didn't know it was that. I didn't know I cared for him so much. I didn't know when he left. I didn't know uh, 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 after I, I uh, 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 raised my children the only way that I was, knew how to raise my children because that's the way I taught. And now, now the light is in the space and all of this, 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 this information that you didn't have and God bringing in a new information so at least you can be decent to your grandkids, you know. He brings in all these new... Uh, 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 revelations, and now when you look at what you have done and the way you did, even in, in, in ignorance or otherwise, shock. The next stage is denial. You're going to try to avoid the inevitable. Well, how can I change without changing? You see, how can I change positions without changing my mind and be different? How many people know that ain't going to work? Because if you don't change your heart and your mind, Whatever you, whatever you have with you, you're going to take it with you. And whatever that's, if, it, if it's got stink on it, you're just going to take stink to the next, into your new space. That's people who say, listen, those certain people say, when they move from certain areas, they say, listen, let me tell you something. Everybody, before you come in this house, into our new house, we're going to empty our bags outside. Y'all know where I come from, right? <laughs> Dump the bags outside. Just in case we got a, a stowaway in a shoe somewhere. Why is that? Because I'm going to do whatever it takes. If I got to expose my belongings outside in public, I'm going to do it. But I'm not taking this thing in the yard because what do I know? They multiply. You see one of them, how did this thing get pregnant? They done went across the street, found a friend, and then invite everybody back to your house. Denial, trying to avoid the inevitable. You're hurt. Sometimes we try to avoid it, so then we get angry. Anger is the next phase. Frustration, an outpouring of bottled up emotion. Those emotions got bottled up, bottled up because after shock and then denial, because of the denial, now they bottle up because you never sat with them. Does that make sense to you? See, when you avoid things, um, um, suppressing is not expressing. Suppressing things doesn't release it. It just keeps it inside. You know, and then we go kind of find what I call um, beautiful distractions. My granddaughter is a beautiful distraction. Sometimes she keeps me from doing work that I know I need to do. But I make, but, but I tell myself, you know, this is where I need to be. Okay, when you come get up tomorrow and you look at that same pile of stuff, what you going to do then? Uh, bargaining, seeking a vain way out. Now, I want you to hear, hear you in the situation. You're going to have to surrender something in order to get the change, to be the change that you want. Something has to change. Sometimes we push in the purpose. Sometimes we pay attention that, that this is what we need and we're right there and, and, and we're mature enough. But sometimes, sometimes it comes God, God's intention to restore you. It comes in ways you don't like. Sometimes, please, somebody say, please leave. Nobody leaving. 
Then they tell you what? Get the hell out. You ain't got to talk to me like that. Well, I wouldn't talk to you like that at first. But you know what? But listen, you're mad. But guess what happened when you got out? You walked right into God's glory. <laughs> what happened? See, that ain't ever. Sometimes, the wrong used to say it this way the house is on fire. Everybody come out, the house on fire. Then the wrong said, but sometimes we said, get your fat butt out the house. Don't be calling you hard to win a water fire. Don't be calling me fat. I appreciate that. Well, you can take your fat back out, but outside, say, say your life, and if you want to lose some weight. If not, continue to love yourself just like you are. But don't stay in there arguing, bargaining, trying to find a vain way out. How am I going to go to get your ego? How am I going to get around this? You won't. Only by truth. Depression follows that. Finally, the realization of the inevitable. Now you're depressed. And you're depressed because you realize that whatever you were trying to deny, you can't deny it. Now listen, this isn't, this isn't one day, two day, three day, four day, five day. This could be one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years. This could be years. Before you get to the point where you, you are sick of lying to yourself and now you're depressed. Because remember, you started lying in denial. Or let's say this, not being honest with yourself in denial. And I, and I say this to people, I need to be more honest about me than I am about other people. I don't know why we think we can be honest about other people. As dishonest as we can be when we uptight. The next one, these are the ad was testing. I like that. See, after depression, after you go ahead and feel it, denial means you're, you're trying not to feel it. Remember, I'm over there playing with my granddaughter. Oh, we doing all kinds of things. Oh, it's happy. Oh, then I go home and I see that pal or something that I've been avoiding. And here come those real feelings because they didn't go away because denial didn't take it away. It just put it off. Just, you know how some folks do, just because you go from one dirty room to a clean room where you clean that room, then you take all that stuff and put it in another room. You know the stuff's still in your house, right? As I try to tell my husband, I'm, I'm cleaning up, not if, it, not if anything, as long as nothing left out that door, I'm just going to find a mess in another place because the deal is it is too much stuff. This ain't about dirt. This is about too much stuff. Testing. Now you got to seek. Now you're ready because you're going to seek. I, I don't know if I would use the word testing, but I, I, this didn't originate with me, so I'm not going to. I ain't want to do no whole bunch of thinking about it. Um, seeking realistic solutions. Now you're ready. Now, now, now you're being realistic about your situation and your solutions are realistic. They're not. I, I think I heard from a book that, that, that uh, uh, has something to do with 50 Cent. And, 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 and the person was talking about how we have a taste for escape. A taste for escape. And it's good to have a taste for escape because that means you don't want to be stuck anymore. But when you get that taste for escape, you got to make sure that you're not doing it, doing it a vain way and ask God, God, what is the way out that you're showing me? My granddaughter can be a taste for escape. I just want to escape from all of the things I got to work out and I can just lose all my mind. But that's all right. You're going to come right back to the same message. How, how long are you going to put this off? The last one is acceptance, and that's what we're going to talk about the most. Acceptance, finally finding the way forward. So I want you to see the process. Something happens. You, you're asked to change. You're, you're, some, you're facing something that has to do with change. And you're, and you're working your way to acceptance. But by the time we get there, we, we've made a couple of stops along the way. But the, the goal is to finally get to the place where you're ready to move forward in truth. That's acceptance. Look on your paper. We talked about this on Sunday at 8 o'clock service. Listen to this. Mark 14, 13 through 20. We're going to roll through this. Then Jesus said to them, y'all read it with me. Then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. How did he take it away? Resist because you were challenged to think differently. Resistance level number one, what part of the message when it comes to God loving you um, is difficult for you to accept? Let's talk about that message. Because when you see, when you see it says, um, some people are like 
um, uh, I'm sorry, as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word. He takes away the message. It's not a word. It's a message. So let's, let's focus our mind on the message of unconditional love, which you're not going to find in the Bible. You're not going to see the word unconditional love. So you have to know what it means to have unconditional love. And sometimes what makes it so difficult for many of us when it comes to unconditional love is because we're not defining it well. Because we think it means we're going to be doormat. We think it means that we're going to have to let people do things over and over and over and over again. That's not what it means. But you got to go to the blog for that conversation. Resistance level number one. What part of the message of love is difficult for you to accept? Remember. It all starts with acceptance. Now we're working backwards. What he's showing you is it's resistance. There's something about it that you don't want to accept. So let's go to the next one. Verse 16. Others like seeds sown on rocky places. Read it with me, people. 16. Others like seeds sown on rocky places. Hear the word and at once receive it. Now listen, you have at least received it. You're not in full resistance anymore. You let a, you let a little bit in. Does that make sense to you? Hear the word and at once receive it with joy. Verse 17. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Resistance level number two. Now I will make sure I can make sure I got on your paper what you have on mind. Do you have every idea has a history? Okay. Every idea has a history. See, the problem in this, you, you're ready, but your roots are off. It means this, uh, uh, it's time, this is the level where you have to challenge your thoughts and your beliefs. I'll give you a great example that happened to me uh, recently, and let me try to, yeah, this is what I want to talk about. So recently, I went and I did a, 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 a conference. So I'm in the room with the speakers. We all in the room. And everybody's talking. And we have different styles of ministry. I don't have no problem with that, you know. So everybody, we all in the room. It's all women. And so they, 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 they're talking, and, and, and somebody says, you can tell when somebody's so, 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 so they was anointed. Okay. When they prayed, they was anointed. I mean, I don't know what that is, but guess what? She'll keep her mouth shut. You can tell because when they pray, they're anointed. Because I can tell when somebody's not anointed. Oh, well, God. I'm showing up for duty. <laughs> so I ask, Deron says, this is why people don't like you. I'm sorry, man. I thought about all the people who God might use. All of us are in here leaders. Are you saying that to people? So I said, well, what does that look like? You told me you know what that look like? And you told me you know what it doesn't look like. Well, what does it look like? Um, you know, you can feel it. I said, well, what you feeling, that's a style. I think that's a style. So you have to understand, they, they, I'm, I'm, I'm on the ropes. <laughs> three, I'm two, one quiet, another one a little quiet, she looking like this, and the other three, they going for it. But guess what? I got my boots on now. So the story was, well, how does that look? Is that a look? Is that a feeling? When they say they feel, okay, that's a feeling? Because you know those, those are your feelings. Well, no. You just know. Tell me. I want to know. How do, what is it? Is it a look? Nah, it's just something you know. Let me say this to you. And that's going to always be a problem. You got to, listen, you don't know what you believe. Nobody in here should be believing simply because of what you heard somebody else say. Only. Where y'all getting that from? You don't know. It's just something. It's just something. So now I say, well, listen, there was two people praying. Two men was praying. One was a Pharisee, and he had a whole lot to say. And one was a man that said this, forgive me, Lord. Did he have time to show anybody he had an anointing? He only said but a few words. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. That's the one that God said, the Lord said was justified. So could the people there tell 
from those few words? Because I guarantee you that the Pharisees was praying scriptures. I get tired. So I do this. Hook. I guarantee the Pharisees was praying scriptures. You mean to tell me you would have? You that's how you would have saw it? Fine, I said I can't believe y'all saying this right here. That's all right, cause I got ten minutes. Twenty folks had twenty minutes on that mic. Them ten minutes, I hit that thing in them ten minutes. Nobody knows. Man got to examine himself. <laughs> I was supposed to go do a book. But I, forget who the Harvard got to show up for the Lord. Come on now. You mean to tell me that a person who is speaking on the mic, what God said, what if they were nervous? What if what you could see is nervousness? How is that? Because you didn't, because you feel something. I don't have to make you feel a thing. I don't have to make you feel a thing for it to be the Lord. What is this? This is the same kind of thing that brings the shame that came in the garden, and now that's why folks don't want to come to church. It's the same kind of, how you going to tell somebody what their conversation is? God is like, how can you tell me whether, whether, whether I'm giving a good hug or not to my father with these, with prayer, if prayer is, is for connecting? Then one person stepped up, had me and Nicodemus in the crowd. God bless her. She said, I hear what she's saying. She said, at this point, so anointing is almost anything in church. So most people don't even know what it is. Now, I could have went back and said, you all are using it wrong. Your roots are off. But I was going to have to speak. And they, some of them didn't speak. They were like, I'm nervous. I was like, I'm about to mess these people's minds all up. Getting all, in, getting all in their head. But I understood. Their roots were off. Why do you feel the way you feel? See, if you can tell people I'm nervous, I'm sad, I'm anxious, they'll know how to deal with you. I just feel that way. And then people got to work real hard. Go find out what you're feeling and then come. Then come and share. That way you can tell me how you feel and I won't tell you how you feel. And then you won't be offended because I'm telling you how you feel because you ain't telling me how you feel. Or don't talk. I done told you wrong a couple times. I'm feeling something I don't even have any words for. It. But don't make somebody fish. But what was happening with these people? They received it, but they had no roots. Where are your roots? What are you believing? What are your thoughts and beliefs? Where are you getting that from? Where, where are you getting the message of how God loves you? Where, what, what are you telling yourself? Because I believe in my heart. If you accept God's word as totally as his word, it will transform you. Not because he, I say so because it transformed me. I can tell you what my ugly parts were. I can tell you how my ugly parts went through these stages of grief. I can tell you on, on Sunday that, listen, I've done a whole bunch of things. I have surrendered all kinds of things to God. But this strength of mine, I haven't. Now, I think I have because I don't go forward like I used to. God said, no, 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 no. You just, you just made yourself more publicly acceptable. But no, you have not let me transform you. Surrender. See, I can tell that to you. Because I went through all of the bad feelings and all of that stuff that comes with coming into the light, feeling strongly about what you are uh, 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 away. No different than Paul. Doing what he's supposed to do in a certain way, and then God had to come and show him how to do it a better way. And that feels like something. That feels like missing the mark. That feels like regret. That's why you have to know that God's forgiveness is for you. Because if you don't, you're going to build another stronghold. You're going to make up another excuse. You're going to blame one more person. And you're going to wait for somebody to come try to tell you that they got something to put in this box. And God said, ain't nobody going to put this box? I put all the pieces that were needed in this box. Okay? Can't, no, can't nobody make this what's in this box more original than I made it. All right, let's go. Verse 18, still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Resistance level number three, you're torn between two opinions. He 
said, now you, you, you heard the word, but now the words of this life, you're torn between two opinions. What you think and what God say. And each level, you have to release some of that resistance that you have. It ain't even doubt anymore. Let me say this. It may have come in like doubt, but it's resistant. And it's going to remain doubt unless you do something to study yourself to show, your, to show yourself approved. If I had a person with a, a, a problem with rejection, if I had a problem with, with acceptance, I'm telling you, I would be fully, uh, 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 I would be bilingual. And what I mean by that is I would know everything. I may know everything I knew from my past and who did what, but I would know all the things I could know that God said. And then I will accept God's way over my way. But I understand why you don't believe God's, God, God's way, because you have all those memories. You have all those, that past hurt. You have an experience that says, every time I do this, this happens. God ain't on that script. He said, I can do a new thing right now if you let me. But I'm not going to keep talking to you about this, 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 this other stuff. And the more you let the two things, I don't know if you understand how, how, how plants get choked out. Well, it's because of some, foreign, some foreign agent, right? Weed, right? Some, some foreign thing comes in with the real original thing, and it stunts its growth. See, listen, you don't just want to be a tree. You want to be a tree with fruit on it. But some people, I've grown, but you ain't bearing no fruit. He said, he didn't say they stop you from um, growing. He said stop you from producing fruit. So nobody benefits from you being here. You just grow up. There ain't, not, there ain't nothing for somebody else to eat. There's, there's nothing you have that you can be a giver, that you can give somebody. Why is that? Because you're still torn between two opinions. Whose report are you going to believe? And I'm telling you, the world is real loud. They want to tell you about who done cut their hair. So-and-so cut their hair. They cut their hair. And then I, when they cut their hair, somebody was talking about what happened to their ends. Oh, my God. Are we saying, is this a conversation? And I only saw it because I was looking for videos for the blog. And I saw the headline. And, and she was going to let people know why her ends was gone. Oh, my God. Do you have to tell people? Is this, what, is this the light we're sharing in the world? Yes, how to, how, to, how, to, how to keep your ends from breaking off. Resistance level three, again, you're torn between two opinions. You still, not, you still haven't accepted yet. But what's the blessing? You at least let God's opinion in there. Let's talk, let's talk about the good that's in this. You at least have two opinions. For so long, you only had one. People don't love me. People don't like me. Somebody going to mistreat me. Blah, blah, blah. You only had one. Now you got choices. So you're in a better position. Let's go to the last one. Verse 20. Read it with me. Others like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Y'all circle the word accept. Right there. You got to accept it now. Accept God's truth over man's truth. Listen, they accept it and produce a crop 30, 60, or even 100 times what was Producing only came when you accept it. So I'm going to talk about the message of love. There's all mess, all kinds of messages in there. But in order to accept the message of love, you have to accept the message of forgiveness. They go hand in hand. But in order to get to that forgiveness, you have to, you have to repent. You have to accept the fact that you were off. You have to acknowledge the fact that you are in resistance to God, not to me, not to you, not to the man. Not to, your resistance is with God. When you don't let the God that's inside of you, the truth that's inside of you, I'm saying the spirit, that, that higher self speak, and you don't value that higher, self, that higher self, you let God down. And because the spirit of God lives in you, when you let God down, you feel it because, you let, because that spirit is in you. Does that make sense to you? You're not separated. You're not separated. You're borrowing someone else's breath. And what you feel, he feels. So when he feels disappointed, you feel disappointed in you. 
And that's when we run around trying to get somebody to, you know, patch up something. Listen, acceptance, changing your default and making a decision. It's all the way back around to phase one. You have to change your default. That means you have to, you, you have to go back to the beginning uh, to at least phase two, resistance two, and you're going to have to ask yourself what, you're going to have to ask yourself, what do I believe and why am I standing so strongly on this? Because some of us are going to find out, as we found out in marriage, listen, we only believe marriage because somebody else told us about their marriage. He was, oh, I look at you and Deron's married, but you ain't married to Deron. Okay? Whoever you're going to mar you're married to, you're going to have to learn how to love them truly. You're going to have to learn how to love them according to who they are. Hoping they change in some areas, of course. But you're going to have to love them. I've seen too many people. My, my father didn't treat my mother like this. Okay, well, you ain't married to your father. My mother didn't treat my father. You know, I dated somebody that said, you know, from my culture. Women didn't act like this. I said, but you're in America, so I don't know why we're having that conversation. You're in America, shorty. <laughs> and I'm telling you, that, 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 whatever you like. <laughs> my parents, listen, they, they, they stole my parents and brought them here. I got a whole new mindset. Listen, every idea has a history. You got to change your thoughts and beliefs. You got to challenge them, and you got to ask yourself, you got to ask yourself, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one. You got to ask yourself, what is making me unfruitful? All we're going to talk about is love, and this is why I'll end. Why are you unfruitful? Why, 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 why is the, the voices of other people when it comes to whether you're loved or not? Why is that loud? Huh? Why are we still looking for somebody to put something in a box? Huh? If you came in late and turned, tuned in later, this box had all puzzles pieces in it. And I told him, I said, okay, well, here's the pieces, here's the box, and here's the end result, if that was your picture. But you're not going to receive it in, in the puzzle together. You're going to receive the pieces, and they're going to be scattered. And all you need to know is if, 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 if these pieces right here look anything like something on this box, and if it looks anything like something on this box, act like it belonged to you. Give it a chance. If somebody asked me to go on American Idol, I wouldn't go. Now, I can say, I wouldn't go. But if they ask you who, you should think about it. Because they belong to you. You have the evidence that you can hold that down. Now, I'm better than some people that go on American Idol. But Lord knows nobody should invest in me. They know I'm not going to win the prize. Come on now. So God will show you those pieces that are close. That's a part of your connection right here on earth. But you got to start wanting that whole picture, thirsting, lusting for that fi final result. Just know that when God showed it to you, that's where you're going. You were love before somebody told you you wasn't love. He already put it in you. You were peace before anybody ever told you you wasn't peace. He already put it in you. You were truth before anybody told you you were a lie. It's already in you. You can even hear me say it's already in you. Or you can hear the voice of all those people saying, you, you know, you told a lie one time in your life, so you're a liar. Listen, most people in here don't lie about their weight at least once. Who you going to believe? When you decide that you're going to accept what God says to you about love, then you're going to recognize what belongs to you, even females, even if it's a man. You understand me? You can't even see. Why God, why something is even in your space? Because you're not willing to let God do it his way. He's going to finish what he started. You came unassembled. You came as a human being being raised by other human beings. But it's his goal to transform you, to transform you into his likeness. And if you're trying to be anything like God without forgiveness, not going to happen. Do you understand that? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your many blessings. I thank you for your word. I thank you for change. I thank you for forgiveness. I thank you for love. I thank you for peace. I thank you for understanding. I thank you for joy and kindness. I thank you, Father God, for showing me even more what my purpose is in you. I thank you, Father God, for giving me this opportunity on this side of heaven to be a reflection of who you are. 
not who my parents were, not my upbringing, but a reflection of who you are. I thank you, Father God, that restoration comes from you, and so does recovery. Father, it's all in your hands. We turn over to you, Father God, those things that we thought we needed to handle. And we trust you, God, with this life that you put breath in and that you sit here for purpose and on purpose. And we receive that from you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. Let's move.